Okay, this is uh, just going to go over the question structure for Unit 3 in GCSE and Excel History. Unit 3 will be your uh, Britain paper, the British Society paper, and there's going to be five questions. Right then, for question 1, it's very similar to the Russia paper in that you're going to be doing uh, two to three supported inferences based on what you learn from the source. Supported inferences is uh, in the format of point evidence explained structure, and my advice is that... Uh, you do two point evidence explains and then if by happy coincidence you have some time at the end then throw in a third one because timing is a, a, a main issue for many people with this paper it certainly is for me um, so yeah if, if, if you think you can manage the time then go ahead and get and get down three supported inferences while you can three is more likely to get you the six marks that are available than the two but it is possible to get six uh, from two supported inferences, I believe. So, if you want my advice, then go two supported inferences from what you learn from the source, and then a third one if you have time at the end. An example of what uh, question one might look like um, would be uh, here's one of the sources that you're given. It's from a broadcast on Berlin Radio, 16th of November 1940, about the air raid on Coventry. So, your point. From the source, I can infer that the attack was a success. Evidence. My evidence to support this inference is, in a short time, all large and small factories were set on fire. Notice how that is taken directly from the source. That is something you have to do in the evidence. All evidence you have, similar to the Russia paper, must come from the source. It's right here. That in a short and large, sorry, in a short time, all large and small factories were set on fire. Uh, and then explain it. This evidence supports my inference because it shows so much damage has been done, which makes the attack a success. And you want to be doing a two to three of those. I'll just leave you off with my advice one last time. Do two if you uh, are struggle with time, and do a third one if you have time at the end. If not, then just go ahead and whack down three while, while you can. Okay, question two. Uh, this is similar to question one in that it's a pretty simple structure and shouldn't really take you that long. It's worth eight marks, and this is all about what the purpose of the source is that you're given. So you want three paragraphs. In the first paragraph, you provide a bit of context from the source. So if we're going with this one that we just used before in question one, then we can say the context is that um, it's a broadcast on Berlin Radio, uh, 16th of November 1940. And we, so we can tell that during that time, the Blitz was happening, and it's about an air raid on Coventry. So this is... Um, from a German perspective about the Blitz. Paragraph 2, you then do your point evidence explained, but this is about the message of the source, and you're using the information that the source has given you. Okay, this is a point evidence explained, and then in your third paragraph, a lot of people struggle to establish the difference between these two. You then say what the purpose of the message is. So, if we uh, look at it in a bit more detail, this is more um, defined structure for you. Um, the context and the p purpose of the message is only point and evidence. The only point evidence explain. I'm no, sorry. The context is point evidence. The purpose of the message is point explain. The only point evidence explain that you do is uh, what the message of the source is, not what the purpose of the message was or the context. So. If we're to use this source here, then we can say that uh, when the source was produced, the blitz was happening during this time, and then just give some stats about the blitz. Point. The message of this source is, if we look at it, it's to, uh, to inform the people of Germany that, uh, that the attack has been successful. My evidence to support this is, and then... Uh, you can say it's from a broadcast on Berlin radio, so you know that it's being broadcasted to the Berlin people, and then you can use the same evidence again. In a short time, all large and small factories were set on fire, or about 500 tonnes of high explosives, and three, sorry, not three, 30,000 incendiary bombs were dropped. Evidence, and um, so explain, this evidence supports my point because it shows that uh, so much damage has been done, which makes the attack a success. And then just leave off with a simple point and explain of what the purpose of that message is. Okay, so we've just explained what the message of that source is. Okay, it's to inform the Berlin people 
or the people of Berlin or the people of Germany that the attack was a success. The purpose of this message was, well it will be to inform the people of uh, Germany that they're on the winning side and uh, this was because I would imagine the uh, German army and the Nazis wanted support from their citizens. Uh, here's a much more detailed and defined answer. I'm a bit pushed for time now, and uh, uh, if you want to pause that down, um, so I pause here and note all this down, then by all means go ahead. But I'm, I'm moving on now. Uh, question three. This is where th things start to get a bit more chunky, and you go into a bit more detail. Okay, it's worth ten marks, and this is where you are comparing uh, sources in detail, and you're saying whether the sources that you are given agree or disagree about something. Um, or what they sorry what they agree or disagree about. Um, you need to also mention the extent to which the sources agree and disagree. Uh, so if you use the word extent, that'd be pretty helpful. Um, so like uh, sources A and B agree to a large extent. However, sources B and C disagree to a large extent, or uh, A and C agree to a minor extent. You want to be using the word extent and it will help you a lot in uh, making it clear how far the sources agree or disagree about something. You also need to say uh, or give reasons sorry, for uh, why they might agree or disagree. Is this because one's unreliable? Is one from a British perspective? The other from a German perspective? And then to give an overall simple one, one line, one sentence even conclusion. <coughs> so um, Here's uh, basically the layout uh, in short on uh, the way you would approach this one. So you've got two sections to the to the answer in this. You've got the bit, a bit in here up in black, which is uh, saying what they agree or disagree about and to what extent, and that's point evidence explained. And then the second bit down here in red is why they agree or disagree, and this is just point and explain. So if we were to go here, I think, yeah, okay, we're going to be using using these sources here. I want to pause and just um, pop these to one side if you've got that ability on your screen. Uh, point, evidence, explain, point, evidence, explain, point, evidence, explain, point, evidence, point, evidence, conclusion. So, I'm uh, going to run over this quickly for you. Uh, your first opening paragraph um, for the point sources B and C, which are this one here and this one here, uh, agree to a large extent that the raid targeted civilians. Evidence explained. All three sources fully agree that the raid was one of the worst ever. Evidence explained. Point, however, source A fully disagrees with sources B and C about if the raid was a good thing. Evidence and explain. So that is your established bit there on uh, what the sources agree or disagree about. So we've been given three sources here, so we need to compare each one of these. So A must be compared with B and C, C must be compared with B and A, B must be compared with C and A. Ooh, there we are. Uh, so that's the first bit established on where you're talking about what they agree or disagree about. And then we just need to establish in a simple uh, point explain, point explain why they disagree about that. So the sources disagree about this because source A is from a German point of view and then explain why this will mean there's disagreement. They will want to portray the destruction of Britain as a good thing and a success to help get support back home. And then, uh, so that's the explaining why A would disagree, and now we've got to talk about the others, uh, B and C here. However, sources B and C are from the British point of view. They will want to do the opposite because uh, to help keep the war effort going but, okay, that should be a T there, but increasing hatred of the Nazis. And then a simple one-line conclusion there. Uh, overall, sources B and C strongly agree about the Blitz because they had two strong agreements, uh, but source A disagreed with B and C strongly about the Blitz because the source hardly which B and C agreed with. What? Sorry, this isn't my PowerPoint. This, there's a bit in here that doesn't make sense. Basically, for the conclusion, just... Um, just sum up why uh, B and C or A or, or the sources that you're given uh, agree or disagree and just like, give a minor, very, very um, loosely described reasons as to the nature of the sources, why they disagree or, or agree. 
<coughs> right then, question four. Now we get into a lot more detail, okay? This is by far my favourite question because so many people believe it to be easy and have no idea of the amount of effort you have to put into it. So, with question four, you're talking about how reliable or how useful a source uh, is. So, if the question is using the word useful, and that is the word that you use in the exam, okay? So, you want to be using in your points, uh, this source is, is useful or this source is not useful. If the uh, question uses the word reliability, so if the question is like assess the reliability of the source and not assess the usefulness of the source, then you use the word reliable in the exam. In your points, you'll be saying the source is reliable because it, it's uh, it's not reliable because, and so on. There are two things that you must do in question four, regardless of what timing, uh, how far into time you are. Um, first one, you need to assess the accuracy of the source using your own knowledge and the knowledge given to you by the source, and you must talk about the nature, and origin, and purpose of the source. The nature, origin and purpose is um, pretty simple. The nature is basically who wrote it, where it came from and all that. Uh, the origins is when it was written and the purpose is obviously why it was written. Um, and if you have enough time then you assess the breadth of the source using your own knowledge and the knowledge given to you by the source. And also, uh, when talking about um, the sources, you must link to the weight of the source. Okay, so that would um, the weight of the source is basically, it's almost like trust, is how much, uh, on, on a scale of 1 to 10 you can use in the exam, how much would you trust that source? Is it, is it uh, could you say, um, after assessing the sources I can place a lot of weight on it, this being 7 out of 10 for reliability, or 7 out of 10 for usefulness, it depends, remember which word is being used in the question. If, it, if it's a very unreliable or very unuseful source, then you can say it's about a 1 out of 10. So I will place very little weight on this source at all. I just want to show you something now that I've made uh, about um, how, how you would undergo the structure of question four if you forget how to do it. I call it NAC with a silent B because, remember, you only do um, the breadth if you have enough time to do it. So I don't want to focus on the B too much. So I just um, remember NAC more than I remember uh, the B. So you you can remember it with, as BANAC if you want. Um, but basically every one of these stands for something that you do in the exam. Okay, so the first one, B, is you talk about the breadth. The breadth is how much the source actually tells you, okay, and that would be done in point evidence explained structure, as does the nature, origin and purpose, uh, which is point evidence explained again. Then you talk about the accuracy of the source. That is only in point evidence structure. Okay, I'll go on to that in a bit um, as to how you would uh, really go, go about that. And then just give a little mini conclusion. Okay, and you want to be doing that times the amount of sources that you've got. So if you've been given three sources, you do, uh, which is source A, B, and C, you go BANAC for source A, BANAC for source C, sorry, B, BANAC for source C. So it's breadth, nature, origin, and purpose, accuracy, and conclusion for each um, source that you're given. Right then, so here are the two sources that we're given. So we're only doing BANAC twice. Okay. Um, source A is an official photograph taken during the summer of 1940, so we know the blitz is happening here, uh, of a family of Londoners with what is left of their Anderson shelter. And you've got E, which is a diary entry. Uh, of Harold Nicholson, a minister in the Ministry of Information. This was done on the 17th of September 1940, so this is also during the Blitz. So how would you go about um, answering this? Well, firstly you would open up with the breadth, but only if you believe you have enough time, because remember you have to do the accuracy and the nature, origin and purpose, and you have to talk about the weight of the source. So breadth, source, uh, let's start off with source. D. Okay, so source D is useful because it can infer that houses were bombed. My evidence to support this is there. Uh, what appeared to what appears to be um, uh, where the house was before. There is now a massive ditch where it has been bombed. Uh, this evidence supports my point because, well, you can take it from there pretty simply. But uh, 
then you have to talk about uh, what the source doesn't tell you. Okay, so there's two parts to the breadth, accuracy, and nature, origin, and purpose: is the good, positive sides of it and the negative sides of it. So breadth, point evidence, explain, or it does, it does, it is useful, or it is accurate. Uh, sorry, uh, reliable, depending on uh, what the question says. So uh, point evidence explain it is useful because point evidence explain it isn't useful because. So the point evidence explain that it isn't useful. Uh, we now go. However, the source does not tell me that. Um, well, what, what didn't it tell me? Um, family of Londoners. So we can tell it's in London. Uh, okay, so it doesn't tell us about what's going on in the countryside during the blitz. It doesn't tell us that that is a safe place. My evidence to support this is the picture only shows destruction in London. Explain my evidence to support this point is because and then just take it on from there. Right, accuracy. <clears throat> How would you go about this just talking about point evidence and point evidence? Well there is um, way before you have point evidence explain to show um, uh, to show the positives and the negatives. So it's a point evidence explain so it is useful, point evidence explained it's not useful. Now you do a point evidence and a point and evidence to show that it is in fact I'm just gonna never use this before, so hopefully this will work. So you go point evidence and then another point evidence for it is accurate, and then you do a separate point evidence and another point evidence for it isn't accurate. So the source, uh, what are we doing? D, yeah. The so, uh, source D is useful because it is accurate. The accurate information is houses in London were bombed. Then you do the second point evidence is uh, from your own knowledge. So, the f so it's point evidence, point evidence, it is accurate. And within that point evidence, point evidence, you split it up again to a point evidence what the source tells you, and then a point evidence what your own knowledge confirms. So what we've just done, we've just done uh, point evidence for the source, source D is useful because it is accurate and then your evidence, the accurate information is that uh, houses in, Lon in London were bombed. Point, we're now going into your own knowledge, I know this is accurate and then your evidence from my own knowledge I know that, and you might just want to list a little, st a few stats you know about the number of houses that were bombed in London during the Blitz. Um, okay, so that's the first bit done. Then your second bit is that it's not accurate. So source uh, D is not useful because it does contain some inaccurate information. The inaccurate information is, remember this first point evidence is just coming from the source, so the inaccurate information is uh, it only shows happy faces um, or, or a happy attitude um, towards uh, the, the given circumstances. I know this is inaccurate from my own knowledge I know and then you can say that not a lot of people were happy not a lot of people did have uh, morale boosters during the when their house got when their house got bombed and then the nature origin and purpose okay so the source is not useful because it could be unreliable okay uh, sorry no, we're going away now from the point evidence point evidence structure into the point evidence explain point evidence explain thing again okay so this is point evidence explain for the source Point evidence explain against the source. We're going to start off with against the source. Uh, point evidence explain. Uh, sorry, my point. The source is not useful because it could be unreliable. Evidence. My evidence for this is well, if we look at source D, it's an official photograph. Uh, this makes it unreliable because back in the day, the government censored a lot of their photographs. And was it was it published in a newspaper? No. Okay. If it if it's published in the newspaper, it has almost been it has almost definitely been censored. Um, if it says official, but this is an official photograph, so this might have been staged uh, by the government to boost morale. Uh, and then your other point evidence explained, uh, which is the more positive side of the source. The source is useful because it is, however, likely to be reliable. My evidence for this is, and then. Um, we can string out from here that shows it's reliable. There is, um, the family of Londoners, what is left of the Anderson shelter. Okay, well, again, uh, more to say it's in London. What's reliable about that? Well, it, for a fact, we know that London was bombed, so it's likely that uh, this area has been bombed and it's not staged. 
and this makes it reliable for cars and then just go with the flow from there now this last bit here uh, where you say overall uh, my analysis shows the source is useful or it isn't useful for cars this is where you bring in your weight okay so overall my analysis shows the source is useful uh, or isn't useful we're gonna I'll, I'm gonna go with uh, it isn't useful uh, because oh you're choking no don't do this now please oh for God's sake sorry about this Right, okay, so we're going to say that it's not useful. So overall, my analysis shows the source is not useful because, and then we can say it's likely to be unreliable, sorry, uh, yeah, unreliable because it's an official photograph. Um, also, it lacks a lot of breadth and, um, however, it does have um, decent accuracy. And so I will place a little bit of weight on it given that the only uh, positive things I could find about it are that it's re reasonably accurate and so I'll place little weight on it this being about let's go with 4 out of 10 and so that's all, all uh, done now for source D and then you've got to do exactly that again but for source E so you've got to do breadth, accuracy, nature order and purpose and a little sum up for, the, for each of the sources Okay, here's um, just a, a bit of an example of so basically what we've just gone through. So, again, I'm pushed for time, and uh, in all honesty, this is actually my fourth attempt to make this video. I've been constantly interrupted, so my only priority right now is to get it done. Sorry about that, but I'm only human. So, if you want to note that down, uh, this is more um, yeah, defined answer for you. Okay, so there's the breadth, there's the accuracy, there's your nature, origin, and purpose, and there's um, little conclusion there. Right then, question five, nearly done now. Uh, this is the hypothesis question. You're going to be given a statement or a hypothesis and you need to take into account all of the sources that the question is, uh, is, is giving you uh, to say whether or not all of the sources that you're given agree with this hypothesis. So you need to provide detailed evidence from the sources and your own knowledge. Okay, your own knowledge is very key in, in this exam. Uh, that supports or disagrees with the hypothesis. You need um, to explain why the source uh, or the sources that are given to you are good ones to use, are they reliable, and then remember to link to your weight again, okay, are they a 7 out of 10 sort of thing. Once you've done that, just come to a conclusion. Put like this, the structure for question 5 seems pretty simple, and it is a simple structure, but it's the effort that you have to put into it that makes it hard, okay. The introduction is pretty simple. Okay, I believe this is the same for Russia in that you answer the question in the introduction, so that uh, if you um, run out of time and you don't get to finish the format of this question, you have still answered the question, so you can get a decent amount of marks for it. So, in the introduction, you would say there is evidence for and against this statement, but overall, I think, and then you answer it from there. Paragraph one is all the stuff that uh, agrees with the statement that you've been given. The paragraph 2 is all the stuff that goes against the um, statement you've been given and then comes to the overall conclusion. Uh, when you've got uh, the quotes for and against the um, for the uh, hypothesis or the statement you've been given, you want to use quotes, you want to again link to the weight and the usefulness. Okay, The usefulness is what makes this uh, these two paragraphs are very detailed and chunky, okay, because if you remember that word usefulness from before, hopefully it should bring some bells, and that usefulness is all about question four, reliability or usefulness, okay, so what you essentially need to be doing for um, question five here, is you go quotes, and then do the, um, the, do the Banach structure that I showed you before, so it's uh, and then do the weight. Okay, so you want to be doing uh, quotes, a knack for all of the sources that you're d dealing with in um, uh, for and against, and then the weight. Okay, so and then just come to a little conclusion. Again, this is only like a little one-liner or maybe two sentences tops could easily just establish that you've done a conclusion. So um, I believe that's it. Yep. That, 
Okay then, that's it. Uh, this isn't on Google Drive. If, if you um, uh, if you re remember, I, I showed you how to get to the um, PowerPoints that I was using before for the Russia video on Google Drive. Uh, this one doesn't appear to be on there. It might be there, and I just can't find it, and I'm very bad at looking. But basically, if you just leave in the comments section on uh, on YouTube below, uh, leave your email there. If you want me to email this. Uh, PowerPoint to you, and by all means, I'll do that. Okay then.